why do we test constraints? I mean, uh, the reason uh, is the same as for testing everything. You want to make sure that you're delivering the right thing, and you want to make sure that the right thing keeps being the right thing through years and years of maintenance, right? So first of all, you test constraints and software for correctness, which is, does it do what I want? You also test your constraints and your software for stability, meaning does it still do what I want even after I've made these five more comments? Some people also like to use testing uh, or the tests as a design tool in the test-driven development method methodology, where you first write your tests and then you design your uh, software so that the test actually passed. Uh, so those would be the three uh, three primary reasons for, our, for, for why I would say you would want to test your constraints uh, to use the API. You actually have to uh, to introduce the Octoplanet test artifact into your project. Uh, you give it a scope test because that's where you want it. And then you can uh, start using uh, the API itself. So the starting point for the API is a class called constraint verifier. And when you call a static method build on it, uh, the API will just start unfolding for you uh, because it's a fluent API. So just uh, type away, use the ID auto completion and you should be able to explore the API uh, without any issues. Simple constraint that we will be testing throughout this presentation. It's nothing fancy. It does implement the constraint provider interface uh, as all the constraints need to. Uh, it only provides one constraint in a method called uh, unused computer. And then the constraint is implemented here as a constraint stream. So let's see what it does. It takes all the computers. It filters the computers so that you only get those that are currently running. So the, the computers that are turned off will not be included. It makes sure there is no process that would be running on on the particular computer. And if there is no process on a running computer, it means that the computer is wasted. It is just sitting there, it's not doing any work, so it's just costing you money. So therefore, we penalize a computer that is running and that has no, uh, no process on it. We use a constraint weight of one hard because wasting computers is not something that you want to do. And we use a match weight of the computer cost. So uh, if a computer costs uh, one unit and uh, you only have one computer uh, that is running without any processes, the uh, final penalty of this constraint will be one hard. So hard score of one hard, zero soft. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, this computer cost, uh, because we will get to it a bit later. Uh, let's take a look at the first simple test for this constraint. So you can see uh, we have this class uh, called Sample Constraint Provider Test. It's a plain test, nothing fancy. Uh, this test annotation is a test annotation from JUnit, but it doesn't really matter. It could be test ng, it could be anything else. Uh, there are two uh, more important things there. First, this is how you instantiate the constraint verifier. Uh, you uh, call the class and the method I already spoke about, and you give it a couple things. First, you give it an instance of your constraint provider. That was the class I've shown you previously. You also give it a, a class of your solution and a class of your planning entities. We get to this is how you have to instantiate the constraint verifier into this class field, into this instance field. And then you can just use the, uh, the variable in uh, your test code. So this right here is a test method, which is called penalizes wasted computer. And it does a very simple thing. First of all, it, it creates a uh, computer with a cost of one which is running. Therefore, we call it a running computer with one cost. It's just a uh, just data object, nothing more. And then we call uh, the constraint verifier method verify that, which gets, an, which gets an argument. And the argument is the constraint. So in our case, it's the unused computer. 
So uh, this method right here in the constraint, that is what we give to the verify that call. So we say, hey, constraint verifier, just verify that my constraint unused computer penalizes when given this computer. 